several procedures on videotape that have been put together for the purpose of continual education. Many times uh, I'm called upon as a consultant from veterinarians, farriers, insurance companies, owners and trainers to help them with equine foot problems. Finding it very difficult to perceive and transpose information on the phone, I have developed a consultation service that allows me to re review your case by video using radiography, hopefully teleradiology in the near future, we use the fax machine so we can hopefully review your case and come up with a constructive plan, treatment plan, that will help you in your endeavors to deal with career and life-threatening problems. This tape has is, is been designed to show explicit detail of many of the procedures that have been some of my original ideas, development and improvement of other people's ideas, concepts of friends, colleagues, and so forth. Constructing aluminum egg bars is quite easy with today's technology. Many farriers steer away from, from welding aluminum due to the fact that they obviously don't want to take the risk of a, of a bar breaking. Following the instructions that I'm going to try to lay out in detail, I think you'll find aluminum welding made very easy. Once you have accomplished the goal of securing the bar a few times, confidence will rise very quickly. You'll find it is the great advantage of applying an aluminum bar many times instead of a steel bar. Using a Coral aluminum welding rod, 8 inch in diameter, made by Welco, and a acetylene torch with a welding tip, a small welding tip, do the welding on a brick preferably a fire brick. It's almost sure fire 100% time that you can obtain a very good durable well that will withstand several resets, even on a racehorse. Shape your shoe. Place the shoe over your aluminum bar. If you need to cut out a special bar, you, would, you should use quarter inch aluminum plate preferably T6 in hardness. Cut the shoe in such a fashion that you have a long weld area. Do not cut it across the short edge of the branch. Have at least three quarters to an inch of weld surface. I prefer to have the weld sitting up on the bars of the foot and not in the sulcus of the frog. This will give you a little more strength. I have de designed three die systems that we are now stamping the egg bar, the egg bar V bar, and the Z bar for quarter cracks of quarter inch plate for the racehorse, three eighths plate for the jumpers. I have fabricated this, this stamp to accommodate my practice as well as farriers who wish to save time constructing the aluminum bar. So the heels are cut on the shaped shoe, placed over the appropriate bar. The appropriate bar is marked. You cut it so it fits very tightly. You must chamfer both edges of the shoe and both edges of the bar so that you have a well that goes well to well with no airspace. This is very important. When you chamfer the aluminum for the welding, use a rasp that has not been used for metal or steel shoes. If you get any foreign material embedded in the aluminum prior to welding, you will have an air pocket to form and consequently a weak point. So I prefer to keep one rasp for aluminum rasping only. Do not try to use a dirty shoe to weld a bar in. 
many fellows and ladies will practice with old used shoes. Do not do this because it gives you a false sense of security that you can't weld aluminum. It's impossible to get a good weld with a dirty shoe. I prefer to weld clean, new scrap stock as practice material instead of used shoes. It's best to practice on the grand champion type shoe as starters because there's lots of aluminum body there. Once you go to the erasing plate that is quite small, quite thin, you find it melts very quickly. But if you will follow the steps I'm going to give you in a very explicit manner, you see it's quite easy to perform this duty every single time with great certainty that it will always work. Place the shoe as is to be welded on your welding brick. Heat the shoe away from the area to be welded first, moving your flame, never staying in one place. Now, I will cut the air back on my tank pretty severely, and I will adjust my flame to where I have just a nice whisper. I do not like to weld shoes with a lot of noise going on in the shop. If someone is grinding, there's background noise where I cannot hear the whisper of that flame. It interferes with my ability to know when the aluminum is right ready to go. The welding temperature of aluminum comes up very quickly with the direct flame. So you heat the shoe approximately an inch to an inch and a half away from the weld surface warming the shoe and working towards the, the welding joint. Then you go to the other side and you do the same thing with the bar. Bring both pieces of metal up to the same temperature together. So you are working your torch back and forth closer to the, to the joint to be welded as the temperatures come together. Once you see the aluminum turn gray, you are very close to welding temperature. Once it turns gray, you go to the other side and have it to come up to a nice dull gray. Then you will start to see it to puddle. Once one side puddles, you immediately go to the other side. Now you bring the puddle to the bottom of the V of your well. Quickly run down the entire well so that you form a slight puddle. Start at either end. Place your welding rod in the V. Turn the flame so it is now on the rod, not on the shoe. Move it quickly, and you'll see that the rod will flow as if it were a molten steel into that V. If it beads up and rolls away, it merely means that your shoe is not hot enough. Don't persist with the rod at this time. Remove the rod, bring the shoe up, a little bit hotter, insert the rod again, put the flame on the rod and melt it in. Do not stay in one place very long and do not put the flame directly on the shoe after you've inserted the rod. If the flame is left on the shoe at welding temperature, you only get to see it for a quick moment because it's quickly blown away. If you overheat it and you have the shoe, the entire shoe to puddle, even though it might not melt away, you crystallize it and it'll break apart once it's cool. The quicker you well, you get in and out and through, the stronger is the joint. By welding in this fashion, you're heating the entire edge of the shoe, the heel of the shoe, and the molecular structure of that aluminum becomes more of a unity than if you TIG weld Heliarc well, where you have a cold joint formed between the well and the shoe. I prefer this type well to any other aluminum union that I've used. Once I've welded the front side, I immediately turn the shoe over and I weld the back side. If you have done a real good job on the front side, had the shoe at the proper temperature, there'd be very little work to do on the back because the aluminum will have flowed through the back in a uniform fashion. It only takes a second though to finish welding the back side. Do not leave any more excess aluminum than is necessary to save cleanup. Allow the shoe to lie there for approximately three to five minutes in air cool. 
At this time, you can pick it up and quench it immediately. Do not leave it in the water long, but touch it quickly two or three times. You do not hurt your well by quenching a shoe unless you quench it too quick. If you're air cooling your aluminum and you hear the, the stress fractures forming in the aluminum as a pinging, ping, 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 you must quench that shoe very quickly, otherwise it will over-harden. The advantage of welding with a torch allows some flexibility of your bar. Once you've welded and cooled, now you dress it down. I ground out most of my well. I want to dress it so I can't see my well joint. I cut the front leading edge. I want all my bars to have a nice cutting edge on the front so they don't form a drag. And then I polish it. By polishing the ground surface of the bar, you, uh, you actually surface harden it to the point that you restrict the amount of wear and the amount of friction. Those bars that are surface hardened in this fashion can be reset sometime up to three times on a racehorse. If you do not polish the bar, many times the aluminum will, ver will wear in a very quick nature to where you get only one reset. The Z bar is placed in basically the same way. You, you fit the shoe, you cut everything, you set it in, you weld the bar in, and then cut the heel off the shoe. The egg bar V bar is designed for the horse that has soreness over the navicular area. It is placed on the foot in such a fashion that there is a quarter inch daylight underneath the V part of the bar. It's designed only to protect that area of the foot from ground contact. I think if you'll follow the instructions I've given you here, you'll find it to be very helpful to you, and you'll be, allow, you'll be able to help another colleague understand how easy it is to well aluminum and be 100% confident that it will always work. Many of these tips were passed on to me by fellow farriers that saw that I needed help and I wish to do the same for you.